welcome students. So, we are discussing the problem of the length of the credit period and we have seen in the previous class that uh, uh, since the seller has to pay the advance tax on the sales he is making and the profit he is earning on that he has to make the advance uh, payment of the tax. So, because of that the credit period cannot be extended unlimited uh, Lee. It has to have some limits because we have seen uh, with certain calculations here that because of the time value of money and because of the say a tax the seller is paying on the loading factor also the net present value becomes a negative after 9 months uh, sorry uh, at, at 12 months and uh, it proves that the credit period cannot be extended <coughs> up to 12 months it has to be somewhere between 9 months and the 12 months and we have seen here that the problem further aggravates when the seller has to pay the tax on his loading factor also which is not his profit the prop tax is paid normally on the profit not on the loading factor but he is supposed to pay because that loading factor is also added into the profit and on that also he has to pay the tax at certain rate we assumed here the 45 percent tax rate so the NPV becomes the NPV of the opportunity cost is negative. So, because of that reason this is a limitation serious limitation for extending the credit from the seller's side earlier we have seen the limitation from the buyer side. So, now the question arises that in this case what should be the maximum length of the credit period. From this say uh, calculation this set of calculations we have seen that at this point it is uh, you see that we have the credit period where the NPV is 164 it is positive 9 months and at 12 months it is negative. So, it is somewhere here that the uh, between this and this it is somewhere here that it is this and up can go up to this somewhere. So, it has to be more than 9 months but less than 12 months. So, is there any mechanism to find out the exact length of the credit period at which the NPV becomes 0? Yes, there is a mechanism that with the help of which we can find out that NPV is 0 that length of the credit period will be the most suitable or the maximum credit period which the seller can allow to the buyer beyond that it is not possible he should not do it means if he is a informed seller and he is a wise seller if he is a say uh, making all the sales on credit basis on considering all the factors and making all the calculations he should not extend the credit beyond that particular period of time because after that he is not earning on those credit sales rather he is paying up and NPV is becoming negative. So, in this case let us learn that what should be the maximum length of the credit period <coughs> at which uh, the NPV is 0 or he can extend the credit. In this we have not been able to get the answer that we say that it is somewhere between 9 and 12 months what, what is exactly that period. So, let us see what is that period and let us try to learn that what is the way out is there any model available which can help us to calculate that period yes that is the model available uh, uh, with us. So, how to find out the maximum maximum length <coughs> maximum length of credit period maximum length of credit period. So, how to find it out we will have to see here for finding out that uh, maximum length of the credit period we will see here that maximum length of credit period. We have a model here this model is m capital M is equal to small m plus n divided by n minus w into small n minus m. This is a model with the help of which we can determine the maximum length of credit period m is equal to small m plus n divided by n minus w into n minus m. So, this is the model what is m here m is the maximum length of credit period C p this is the this is thing we want to find out what is a small m small m is the credit period credit period credit period before the NPV becomes 
negative credit and PV becomes negative right. In this case what is that credit period? Credit period before the NPV becomes negative, credit period before NPV becomes negative, NPV becomes negative at what period? NPV becomes negative at 12, so credit period is 9 months, in this case it is 9 months. Credit period before NPV becomes negative, so that time period is 9 months in this case and uh, then we have to find out the answer for the N, N is the NPV at credit period m small m at 9 months means in this case it is 9 months NPV is in this case is 9 months and that is at the 9 months what is the NPV? The NPV at the 9 months is 164 rupees 164 that is the NPV n which will be the numerator here and then we have the n small n that small n is the credit period after after m at which at which NPV becomes negative at which NPV becomes negative this is the CP credit period after m this is the credit period after m at which NPV becomes negative and in this case what is that? That is 12 months, 12 months and now finally we are left with one thing only that is W. So, W is the NPV, NPV at credit period N small n, NPV that is the at this NPV at the NPV at credit period. and P V at the credit period n small n and that was how much that is minus 203. So, with the help of this model you can easily find out the length of the credit period that what should be the maximum length of the credit period if you apply this model in our case in this um, uh, situation we have seen here in this case if you apply here you would find out we have got an answer here that the credit period is somewhere between 9 and 12 months. But how much exactly is with the help of this model with the help of this model we will be able to find out that what is the value of m maximum length of the credit period. So, let us see and now calculate it that here m is the maximum length of the credit period we want to find out. So, what is that 9 plus 164 this was the NPV at 9 and then is the 164 is minus and here it is at the NPV at credit period N this was how much minus 203 right this is minus 203 and into 12 minus 9. So, if you solve this you will get here 9 plus 164 divided by say uh, how much because it will become positive plus so it is 360 uh, not 4, but I think it is going to be how much 347 is going to be 7. So, in this case 367 right and multi we are multiplying it by 3. So, how much it is going to be you will get this something like 10.34 months, 10.34 months this is the maximum length of the credit period in this case m the value of m is that is the maximum length of credit period that is 10.34 months at up to ma maximum credit can be extended is that is up to 10.34 months not more than that. If you extend the credit period even up to 10.5 months or 50 months in that case also then NPV is going to be negative. We can you can check it also that whether at 10.34 months the NPV is becoming 0 or not means at this point the NPV will be 0. After this if you extend the cre credit period for more than 10.34 months even for 10.50 months in that case also the NPV will be negative. So, at this length of the credit period which is the maximum length of credit period NPV should be 0 right. Now, let us apply a check here try to find out whether NPV becomes 0 at this 
length of the credit period or not right so in this case go for this first thing is what was the base price base price was 10000 right rupees 10000 we wanted to sell for 10000 rupees without credit period if we had to sell on cash this was the amount that we will be selling for 10000 sales of 10000 for 10000 right now second thing is loading factor loading at the rate of 2% per month we will call it as loading at the rate of 2% per month that is the opportunity cost per month opportunity cost and for a period of how much for 10.34 uh, months 10.34 months loading is at the rate of 2 percent per month opportunity cost for 10.34 months so how much will that come out to be if you calculate this this will come out as 2068 right so uh, what will be this this will become the final price this is the final price so how much it will be it is 1 2 0 6 8 12 thousand 68 this will be 12 thousand 68 rupees 12 thousand 68 this is the final price right now what is the cost of sales cost of sales is uh, finally it is 8000 so how much is the profit net profit is NP is net profit here is 4068 rupees 4068 and what is the profit after tax if we apply the tax rate income tax income tax at the rate of 45 percent how much is going to be that that will be somewhere 1830 so, so profit after taxes it is 8 then it is say 3 and then it is 2 2 2238 this is our PAT right and <coughs> amount receivable now amount receivable after credit period Amount, amount receivable after credit period will be how much 1 2 0 6 8 this is one amount receivable after the credit period or uh, uh, we can say that here uh, how much amount is payable uh, amount receivable after that so this is a profit after tax that is 2 2 uh, 3 8 we have calculated amount receivable after the credit period is 1 2 0 6 8 and amount payable amount payable amount payable at the point of sale at the point of sale is how much that is going to be uh, something like first you are going to pay 10000 uh, 8000 plus you are going to pay how much the tax we are going to pay that net profit that is 1830 so this amount is 9830 we are going to pay how much 98 Three zero. Nine eight three zero. Amount receivable after this, the credit period is. Amount receivable. After CP is. That is, we have already written here. That is one two. Zero six eight. Right, and, discount factor now. Discount factor for how much at the rate of 2 percent per month opportunity cost 2 percent per month and for a period of discount factor for 10.34 months that factor is 0 0.8147 so if you try to find out here the present value of amount receivable present value of amount receivable after CP after credit period is how much that is going to be if you multiply 12068 with the factor this will work out as 9831 so how much is the amount which we are going to pay 
at the point of sale 9830 and what is the present value of this amount receivable after the say at the end of the credit period that is 10.34 months that is 98. So, what is NPV is either here it is 1 or it is almost 0. So, verified this is the verified amount that is here we have to calculate here that if this is the time period maximum that is 10.34 months. If we are going to extend the credit in this case in this situation only for a period of more than 9 months less than 12 months and maximum that is for a period of how much 10.34 months. If for this period you are going to extend the credit and PB is going to be 0. After that even 10.50 or 11 months 11.50 and PB will be certainly how much and PB will be negative. So, we have to find out that where NPV is 0 that is the maximum length of the credit period which can be used or where the credit period can be extended up to that limit the credit period can be extended by the seller to the buyer otherwise it will go against the seller he should not make those sales where the credit period is or expected by the buyer is more than the 9 months or uh, sorry in this case 10.34 months. Here I would like to clarify one thing for those people who have less idea of the discount factors how we have calculated the discount factor here that we have used the discount factor that is the say uh, 0 0.817 uh, uh, sorry 0 0.8147. So, how we have calculated this this discount factor is discount factor we have used here is 0 0.8147. So, we have used the discount factor uh, formula. So, it is uh, we can use this uh, d f is equal to that is 1 by uh, 1 plus uh, i divided by 12 and here we have to take the power n. With the help of this formula we have developed this uh, uh, discount factor. So, this will become like 1 by 1 plus interest here in this case is 24 percent per annum and uh, divided by how much 12 months and raised to power here is 10.34 months n is 10.34 uh, months. So, if you solve this this works out as 0 0.8147. So, this is a discount factor we have used here that is 0 0.8147. So, with the help of this discount factor because the opportunity cost is 24 percent per year 2 percent per month. So, when we are discounting it for a period of 10.34 months here we are finding out is that the NPB of this deal is 0 for this maximum length. So, here the cause of limitation or maybe the cause of concern here is the advanced tax payment system. If we have to not to make the payment in advance a tax payment in advance then as I told you that even after 12 months or even on the 12 months credit period the NPB will be positive as we have seen in the previous slides and the NPB we have found out is that was 216. So, that is the main problem that we will have to look for and we will have to restrict the credit period. So, both the sides have the problems buyer also has the problem not to get the extended credit period and seller also has a problem not to give the extended credit period and here you can say that when you talk about say 10.34 uh, months. 10 this is an important point 10.34 months. So, it is it does not it is only to have an idea it is not to exactly has to be 10.34 months. For example, in this case we got an idea that the NPV is going to be negative after 10.34 months. So, it does not mean that exactly it has to be in the terms of uh, sale uh, or agreement of sale like that it can be like say 10 months and 10 days. So, maximum length of credit period he can say to the buyer that if you want to buy from me on credit I can extend you the maximum credit if the discount factor is say uh, 2 percent or loading factor is 2 percent and I think more than 24 percent per annum nobody will be able to make the payment to the seller because at that more than that more than 24 percent is better for the buyer to borrow from the bank and to make the payment to the seller and only expect the credit for a period up to the 12 months up to which that loading factor is 2 percent per month or 24 percent per year. More than that is a limitation to the buyer and in case of the period 
because of the advanced experiment system it is a problem to the seller. So, both of them are caught in certain conditions because of certain factors. So, unlimited extending credit unlimitedly is not possible because if we are doing that if the seller is doing that he is not making any profit out of that rather he is ending up making the losses in the form of the net present value in the absolute value there might be a profit but in the say in, in the npv sense which we should normally look at he is making the loss or he is not making a right it's not a right proposition we should not go for that kind of the business so <coughs> these two limitations we have seen for the buyer as well as the seller also and uh, we were talking about the certain other things. So, we have seen here that limitations of credit uh, period we have seen that from the buyer's perspective also from the seller's perspective also we have learned that how to determine the maximum length of the credit period. So, we have seen the model for that also and next important thing now we will be learning about and talking about is that is the elements of the trade credit policy. There are the two important elements of the trade credit policy one is the written credit policy another is the uh, say a credit policy uh, or the credit limits written credit policy and the credit limits here credit written credit policy see uh, when we talk about the credit extending the credit we have the different uh, say stakeholders in the business management of the company fixes the sales target to the sales or to the marketing department that you have to sell this much. When we prepare the overall budget for the form or for, for, the, for the organization, we say that in the coming one year or next six months or the next one quarter, this much of the sales we want to make in the market. Now, that is a sales target which is fixed. Then it remains may be sometime explicitly mentioned or sometime it remains a silent how much has to be on the cash or how much sales have to be on the credit. Now, once it is only written that the sales target is this much lakhs of the rupees crores of the rupees millions of the rupees in that case it is silent in this case that whether the sales are to be in cash or in credit. So, it means sales are sales whether made on cash or credit. So, since it is not explicitly mentioned so marketing department when will you communicate to the target by the say, um, uh, say, say maybe the board of the directors or maybe the, the company's top management they would be communicated that this quarter we you have to sell say 1 crore rupees worth of the sales or 1 crore rupees worth of the goods you have to sell in the market. Objective of the marketing team remains that yes we will have to achieve the target. They are little concerned whether the sales are on cash or the sales are on the credit. If sales are on cash fine they would like to sell on the cash and that is their first choice. But to meet the credit or sometime uh, to meet the objective or the target and sometime to cross the target or to say, uh, say to reach up to, up to the target if credit is required to be given or sales are to be made on the credit then they would not even like to think about that. Yes they would say that yes somebody is ready to buy on cash ok first you buy on cash after that we are ready to sell to you on the credit also and how much credit to be given to the different buyers that is a million dollar question. Now see that it depends upon the bargaining capacity of the buyer also. If some say marketing manager goes to a distributor and he requests that you sell this much of our product in the time to come then he would say that his intention would be that maximum sales he would like to say which the material is going to receive from the company that would be on the credit after that he will sell the product in the market after the sales proceeds are recovered he will make the payment to the company. So, Marketing guy will be requested by the distributor or will be impressed upon by the distributor that you sell me on credit and after the credit period I will make the payment to the company. So, now the marketing department because there is no written credit policy from the company side if say for example if there is no written credit policy from the company side in that case marketing guy's objective would be that I should achieve the target maybe on cash or on the credit. So, he may agree on any kind of the absurd credit conditions imposed by the distributor or by the retailer or maybe sometime by the customer. It is up to him that any kind of the conditions he can accept 
any kind of the credit period he can give, any kind of the say a loading factor he can apply on that and he can say that okay this much of the sales you, uh, you, 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 this much of the material you buy from us on cash and the remaining you buy from us on credit and then sell, sell that in the market, I will give you this much of the credit period, I will be uh, loading your sales at this much of the loading factor. So, because nothing is in the black and white, there is no written credit policy, so this kind of the problems come. Sometime the marketing people in the, in the lust of achieving their target and quickly achieving the target, what they do? They extend unlimited of maybe say uh, unrealistic credit to some of the distributors and when the material is passed on to the distributor and further he sells in the market, part of those sales become the bad debt because distributors intentions was not to pay 100 percent sale proceeds back to the company. So, just to avoid this kind of situation, sometimes the loading factor is lesser. So, just to avoid this kind of the problems, what the company should do? Company should have a clear cut written credit policy. So, that every sales guy, every marketing guy has to follow those written terms and conditions and he has no liberty to say extend any kind of the credit on any kind of the terms and conditions. He has to communicate the credit policy of the company to the distributor or to the customer and the customer or the distributor has to agree on that because if there is no liberty, if there is no laxity provided to the marketing guy or to the sales guy in that case he has to walk within that given framework which is in the black and white which is uh, uh, say in writing. So, is the first and the foremost requirement for the company that if they want to sell on the credit, they can sell on the credit no problem because nobody can sell 100 percent of the sales on cash, but credit has to be on ac some acceptable terms and conditions. It should be useful for the buyer also, but it should be a beneficial proposition for the seller also. And for that we should have a written credit policy and the marketing staff, sales people should not have the liberty to say agree upon any kind of the terms and conditions with the buyers and then the risk the say sales collections of the company. So, for that there is a need for the written credit policy, this is a very important requirement. So, how to design that written credit policy? There is a framework, quantitative framework for that. So, I will discuss that framework with you maybe in the next class, but it is a very interesting framework and we can work out a score with the help of that framework that every distributor, customer or any other channel of distribution may be retailer looking at the probability of say the sales can be made to him, the payment will be made back by him, the profitability the company will earn after making those sales or if there is a problem in collection of those sales from that customer or from that channel of distribution, how much loss the company is going to make, what is the probability of that loss and what extra expenses the company has to make in collecting those uh, uh, credit sales. By taking into consideration all these factors, there is one policy. Um, is a written policy can be can be can be created and a score can be worked out while dealing with each and every individual channel member or the customer and if that channel member or the customer touches that score or crosses that score then only the credit will be granted otherwise if it is less than that then no credit will be granted to that customer or that member of the channel of distribution. So, how to work out that score and how to move towards having a written credit policy all that and many other things also I will discuss with you in the next class. Thank you very much. Thank you.